So now we're going to find um, critical points of a function, uh, which, and we have to remember, the, the keyword critical point actually means um, max, it's hidden language for finding a max or a min uh, of a function. So, how we do that? Do you remember? We do, what we're doing is checking for the, where the first derivative is equal to zero. And just because it's equal to zero does not guarantee it's a max or a min. Um, because, for example, uh, the graph might look something like this, where the first derivative uh, still has a slope of zero, but it is not a max nor a min. Uh, so, here we go. We're going to take the first derivative of our, of our function, f of x, and we would get what? 2x minus 6. All right, so we take that, we set it equal to zero, we get 2x minus 6, so therefore I get x equals what? Add 6 divided by 2, so that's so therefore I know any place where I could potentially have a where I could potentially have a critical point would be at the x value of 3. So what we're going to do is test a value to the left, a value to the right, that's the first derivative, that's the second derivative. Test to the left, test to the right, and let's see um, what we get. So when I substitute in a value less than 3, 0 is really good, I get negative 6. That's just a little bit of head math, that's why we like 0. So therefore, we, we see that anything to the left would have to have a negative first derivative. So now let's test something to the right, uh, something bigger than three. I don't know, like a million billion quadrillion. So, or whatever, a thousand. When you substitute in a thousand, you can very quickly see two times a thousand is two thousand. Take away six, hey, that's positive. So, we can now say with certitude uh, that this thing, well, because there's no asymptotes or anything that crazy going on, we can say that this thing is a max or a min. And we can figure out what it is, because the first derivative is telling us the graph is decreasing, and now the graph is increasing. So therefore, we know at the x value of 3, we have a minimum. Now, to actually find the critical, now, notice it doesn't say critical number. The critical number would be x equals 3. It wants a point. The word point means we need an x and a y value. So what we're going to need to do is now take our x value, substitute it back into the original equation, and let's find the y value. Okay, so now here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute that in. So therefore, what do we get here? Uh, 3 squared is 9. 3 squared is 9 minus 18 plus 5. So therefore, what do we get? Negative 9 plus 5 plus 5. There we go. Negative 9 plus 5 is negative 5. So therefore, I know I have a min at 3, 4, excuse me, 3, negative 4, there we go. So that's part one, that's question one. Now, because, because question one tells us to find critical points of the function over the entire number line, meaning no restrictions. And we can visually kind of verify this, or mentally verify it, however you want to attack it, saying, look, I know this thing's a parabola, therefore, because it's x squared, and, and just as a, as a quick sketch, you could just say, all right, I know it kind of makes sense, because it's a parabola opening up, so it, it, it fits. Now, number two, though, is saying, all right, instead of being over the entire number line, how about instead we find the critical points from negative two to five? So what would that mean? Well, now I'm cutting my graph off. I'm not saying I'm going from negative infinity to positive infinity. I'm going from 2 to 5. And now we get even more interesting, because now we can talk about, is this thing a absolute um, or, or global, use the other word, or is it a relative min or max? And we can see from the graph, you know, this would be absolute min. Um, but now we also can test our endpoints, because we have ends, we can now talk about this being a absolute maximum, because the graph never goes higher, just the way I drew it. So let's, let's, we, no new calculus is needed, because we, we kept the same function. So now what we're going to do is just talk about mins and maxes over the closed interval, over the interval of minimum 2 to 5. So, to do question number 2, I need to know what's happening at negative 2. So we'll go ahead and substitute that into the original equation. Um, so we're going to get negative 2 squared minus 6 times negative 2 plus 5. And that's going to come out to be um, 21. 
And then I have to do the same thing, excuse me, I have to do the same thing for the other endpoint, which I believe I said was 5. Let me double check if I did. Yes, negative 2 and 5. So therefore, I will always sum that into the original equation. Um, we're going to we end up getting out 0. Okay. So now, what is that saying to me? What is that saying to me? Well, the way I draw my graph, I have three potential points where I could have something interesting happening. I could have, um, if, if I want to talk about absolute maxes and mins and local maxes and mins, we can now do that. I say I have potentially interesting points at negative 2, 21, that's it, because that's an endpoint, 5, 0, because that's an endpoint, and then the calculus showed us we have potentially another interesting point at 3, negative 4. So now, just by simply looking at the y values, I can say which one's the lowest. Hey, it's that one. That one's the lowest at negative 4. Okay, so therefore this one would have to be my absolute min. This one has the highest y value at 21, so therefore this would be a absolute max. And because this one's in the middle, we don't talk about being a relative to anything um, because it's an endpoint. Endpoints don't get to be relatives, they only get to be absolutes. So therefore, you could kind of imagine now that we have a little bit better sketch, we could say, okay, I know I'm down here for my min. Um, I, when I put in 5, I get out 0, and when I put in negative 2, I get out positive 21. Whoop, get there. And now if I connect the dots, something like that, and so you can now see, again, here's the absolute min, here's your absolute max, and right there, there's nothing we don't care. Um, okay, I hope that helps you with it.